Hey guys, so for this video, I'm going to talk about how you can place higher in Season 3 Cash Cups. Like with every new Fortnite season, tournaments and events have changed a lot. Cash Cups have new formats, new scoring systems, and new play styles to go with them. With Season 3 in particular, Epic has made it a lot easier for people to win money. Feels good, man. Seriously though, with my advice, this may be the season you guys make a name for yourself. All of the tips and tricks I'll cover today, I learned from top performing pro players. These include Steelix, who won the EU Cash Cup, FaZe Dubs, who came second in the NA one, Bielanas, Power Worthy, and Energy Benji Fishy. Make sure to check them out on YouTube down below. So with all of that being said, let's dive into my Cash Cup Guide for Season 3. I'm going to begin with the most important aspect of Cash Cups, the format. For Chapter 2 Season 3, solo Cash Cups are only one round long, with 3 hours to play a maximum of 10 matches. This is much different than the format we saw last season in Chapter 2 Season 2. Epic completely got rid of the second round customs. Why this matters is that it gives you guys a much higher chance of earning money. You see, back in Season 2, solo and duo Cash Cups had two different rounds. The first stage was the open one for everyone in Contenders League, while the second one was only for the top players out of opens. If you wanted to make some cash, not only did you have to do well in the first round, but you also had to pop off in the customs against pro players. That is not an easy task. However, with the new format, you only have to bring your A game to one session for a good placement. Speaking of placement, some other important adjustments were made to this scoring system. To start, eliminations went from 4 points apiece to 1 point. Rip in the comments for W keyers. Additionally, placement points were lowered at every tier above top 30, including the Victory Royale. You only get 1 point for reaching each placement level in Season 3. Final scoring system change was elimination points have been capped at 20 elims. Any kill you get above 20 does not count for your total points. It simply counts as nothing. Based on the current format, your best bet is to W key your first game, then only after you get a high point game, start playing for placement. You do not, and I repeat, do not want to W key in every single cash cup match like I advised last season. With the new point system, this is no longer the move. And to prove my point, refer back to the changes I just mentioned a minute ago. Even though placement points were technically nerfed in the new season, elimination points were nerfed even harder. You used to be able to rack up over 100 points with a 20 bomb. I kid you not, pros would literally plan alt accounts and qualify with two games played in season 2. All you needed was one high kill win to move on to the second round. Well, guess what? Epic must have seen how flawed this was and changed it. That same 20 bomb in season 3 will only get you 34 points in these new cash cups. That's more than 70 less points. But wait a minute, Jerry, and did you just say you should W key in your first game? Yes, yes I did, little Timmy. Reason why is your first game will usually be your easiest. Just think about it. When you play in a cash cup, you're put up against players who have similar points as you. That means when you're in your first match, everyone in the game will have zero points. Some of them will be good, some of them will be average, and some of them will be bots. Those are the players you want to W key against, especially compared to a 40 or 50 point lobby. Players in those higher up matches are all going to be good. That does not mean you cannot kill them or anything, it just means they're not going to be as easy as the players in those lower point games. A pretty common strategy I've seen from top tier pros is to hot drop at a POI like Caddy or the Authority for your first match, then land at your normal solo drop spot in the others. Pro players who do this will get a few kills off the bat, get the shockwave launcher or mythic grappler depending on where they land, and proceed to push everyone in sight. They're just trying to maximize how many kills they can get in their W key game. Remember though, after they get a high kill game at the start, they play the rest of their game slow, focusing on making it to end game. Now with all of that in mind, I quickly want to clarify a few things regarding how I advise you play. First is that you do not have to W key your first game if you're not comfortable in fights. The only reason I said to is because that is the most optimal way to gain points. Every person you see at the top of the leaderboards had one pop-off game at the start, followed by a bunch of low-kill placement games. They are proof this strategy works. However, if you know you're not good enough to drop a 15-kill win, then do not try to. You'll just end up wasting 3 or 4 games. Second note is that W keying does not mean playing like an idiot. I feel like most people have a really negative connotation with W keying. They think W keying means jumping in boxes and pushing people like a maniac. When I say W keying, all I'm referring to is getting into a lot of fights. The more fights you get into, the more eliminations you pick up, the more points you get in your quote unquote W key game. Please, for the love of Papa Jarian, do not play like an idiot for the sake of W keying. You still want to play safely and smart. W keying does not change that. It just means you want to try and win as many fights as you can at the same time. Final clarification will be the opposite for when it comes to playing placement. By playing placement, I just mean doing your best to make it to end game. End game is where you get the most placement points and potentially the win. Be aware though, you can still get kills while playing for placement. 
placement. Way too many people think you cannot. Like, if you laser someone down to 10 HP in the mid game, then go push them. It does not matter that you're playing for placement. An elimination in the mid game will actually help you with doing that. So again, you don't have to play like a complete scaredy cat while going for placement points. It is more than okay to push people and be aggressive. You just shouldn't be W keying and pushing everyone you see. Next few cash cup tips are old ones that can be reapplied because of the new format. To start off, a trick unknown army uses is to queue up about 5 to 10 minutes late. No, you're not hearing things, I'm deliberately telling you to delay your start. Why? Well, you gotta think back to what I said about your first W key game. Everyone in that match will have little to no points. It doesn't matter whether that's 30 minutes into the cup or 2 hours in, you will always be matched up against opponents within your point range. Now, I also want you to think about who will have 0 points 5 minutes in. They're either players that died off spawn, or their other 200 IQ pop Papagerian subscribers. You should pray they're not the latter. Seriously, they're more than likely going to be tilted rage monsters that are ready to break their monitor. That is who Unknown is looking to prey on. He's not trying to go up against other pros in his W key game. He wants a bunch of bots to drop a 20 bomb. That's why he starts 5 minutes late. Oh, and before I forget, I do not recommend waiting more than 10 to 15 minutes. You'll obviously get much easier lobbies the longer you wait, but you won't have time to play out all your matches. 5 to 10 minutes is the perfect middle ground. Next tip, again from the big unknown, is to limit your yourself to 3 matches per hour. 3 matches per hour is the perfect pace to finish the tournament on time. You'll end up playing 6 matches in the first 2 hours, then we'll have the last hour to finish out all your games. Pretty simple right? Well, on top of that, there are 2 other advantages of keeping yourself to this pace. First is just like with the first strategy of starting late, you'll match up against not as good players. Whenever you wait to queue up, you're letting other players catch up to you in points. And yes, I know that sounds bad since you want to stay ahead of everyone, but that is not the case for cash cups. You're straight up gonna have harder opponents opponents the faster you queue. Then, the other big reason you should limit yourself is that it allows you to take breaks and mentally reset. Your mentality is the biggest factor for performing well in events. Anytime you start to tilt, you put yourself at risk of ruining your entire tournament. Guess how you can prevent that? By taking a break. 5 minute breaks are the best way to stop tilting. Just get up, walk around, drink some water, pray to Papa Jarian, and clear your head. Do not be a nerd neck who's glued to his monitor screen for 3 hours. You will end up tilting and you will not do well. So, I'll say one more time. Play 3 matches per hour up until the last hour where you play out the rest. This will help you get easier lobbies, finish the tournament on time, and prevent any death slamming. Sounds like the perfect strategy in my opinion. To finish up the video, I want to give you some new tips on how to play placement. These will mainly be for the mid and end game. As I said before, you want to play for placement after your first and or second match. This means you should use all of the placement tricks I've given to you in arena. Stuff like rotating to the dead side of the second zone, positioning at the center of the third zone, and staying at the edge of the fourth zone for half and half. Something new I've noticed pros have been doing in Season 3 is stacking crash pads. Phase Dubs had at least 4 crash pads in his inventory going into the late game. He would use them to rotate in moving zones or to get inside people's boxes. Steelix, who won the EU Cash Cup, did the same exact thing. He chose to take crash pads over a second heal in nearly all his matches. So, if you guys don't have any rotation items like launch pads, the Mythic Grappler, or the Mythic Shockwave Launcher, then take crash pads. They are seriously the most useful item you can take in Season 3. Last placement tip, I learned from my boy Repulse God has to do with reusing launch pads. Launch pads are by far the best way to rotate. The thing is, launch pads are very, very rare. What Repulse does to use other people's launch pads is position himself on high ground. He will literally build out of his fully built one by one, get on top of the person on height during the fourth zone, and then scout for a launch pad that's been placed. Repulse knows he cannot hold high ground for a zone that's far away. He would just get shot out while trying to tarp. Thus, he waits for someone else to rotate before him using a launch and then jumps on it. Alright, but what if no nobody seems to be using a launch. More often than not, someone who's not in circle will have a launch pad. You just have to be patient and pay attention to where it's located. Don't be afraid to tank zone for a free rotate. You're gonna be way more likely to die while rotating early on foot compared to rotating late with a launch pad. Launch pads are truly that valuable. So whenever you don't have one yourself and you want to save your crash pads, get on high ground in the mid game and scout for a launch pad. Overall guys, those are all my tips and tricks for doing well in season 3 cash cups. As a quick little recap, remember to mainly play for placement, except your first game if you're comfortable W keying. Also remember to limit yourself to 3 games per hour, to take breaks, to queue up 5 minutes late, and to utilize all my placement tips. These, along with all my other cash cup videos, which I suggest you watch, will help you do well. You just have to go and actually apply them. If you're serious about doing well, you really need to take my advice. I'm not just saying to take crash pads or anything like that for no reason. They are what the best pro players in the world use, and it is how they are winning these tournaments. Last little bit of motivation for you lads, I truly believe each and every one of you guys has the potential to place in the money. I know it may seem daunting considering only the top 20 players make money, but you gotta keep in mind it's only one round. This
this is your chance to make a name for yourself. So go out there and make Papa Jarian proud. On top of that, if you guys enjoyed the video or learned something new, do be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel, and to turn on post notifications. Shout out to everyone using code Jarian. I gotta give an additional shout out to all the pros that I showcase. I'm gonna leave all their channels down below. Make sure you go subscribe as they are all beasts. Otherwise, that's it from me, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later.